Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. It's Wednesday night, live here on uh, Cape Town TV. Nice to have you along. I know it's been uh, terrible weather, and I'm sure there's many people suffering out there. And hopefully, we'll bring you a smile to your face tonight as we talk about your favorite topic, and that is, of course, rugby in Western Province, and more specifically, club rugby. It has been wet. Some of the games got canceled over the weekend, so not a lot of results coming in. Of course, the students are on holiday, so even less results and means that the logs are in chaos at the moment. So we'll focus on the results mainly that we had in over the weekend, and uh, we'll wait to see what happens in the, in the weeks to, to come along. The usual suspects on the team with me, minus the uh, big criminal himself, Jerome Parvata, but we have Jerome uh, Newman on the show tonight. <laughs> How's it, Jeff? How's it, Jeff? <laughs> Morgan Newman, how are you, my man? I'm good, and you, Jeff? But wet the weekend, but ugh, nothing we can't handle, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I know you guys, uh, you played a bit against, uh, Hamilton's played against Belleville, right? Yeah, we played in Belleville and yeah, I must say the pitch actually held up quite nicely. We were fortunate. Um, for 80 minutes it never rained at all. Yeah. And then, I mean, straight before and straight afterwards it stormed. So we were, we were, we were safe, I think. Yeah, it was, it was the same for me at Belleville and, and Tigerberg, but we'll get into that in a sec. Mr. H, how are you? Very good, JP. The old man said, I don't know what it is. Yeah. The last week we talked about Die reen wat nie, ons speel nie in die reen nie, en nou hierdie week, wat voorbij is, klombestrede afgelas, die velde is vol, toe onder water. Wel, ek weet hy, um, een van die, die wedstrijde wat gecancel was, was natuurlijk die uh, Primrose um, uh, 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 Vals Bay game. Ja. En ek het foto's van die game gesien, I don't know if we've got any pictures to show you guys tonight, but uh, we saw some photographs on, on Facebook, or at least uh, people that were, sending their pictures around um, on, on their cell phones and stuff that the, that the, the field was completely waterlogged. M Mr. H, why do, you, why do you cancel in a game like that? Because it becomes dangerous. Is that it? It's not, they're not, not worried about the grass? Yeah, well, the grass, the grass can recover afterwards. Yeah. But it's dangerous. If you lie in a puddle of water and you can't get up, you know, and a loose mall is there and you're underneath and <laughs> You can drown. <laughs> you can drown. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does sound rather, rather horrendous. Um, one or two other games were also cancelled. Let's get straight into it now. Take a look at some of the results there in, in Super League A. Belleville, Hamilton's 55-10 for Hamilton's and Belha uh, losing to Tigerberg, 20 points to 10. Morgs, uh, you, of course, uh, played in that game. Hammy's against uh, Belleville. You had a bit of a flu in, uh, during the game. Yeah, look, I did. I think the flu with the weather, with the change of weather, I think the flu hit me. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, but I did get about 40 minutes under the belt. So, yeah, not too bad. And I must say, Hamilton's really played nicely, I think. You know, like I say, the weather sort of stayed away. I mean, stayed away for us for most of the game. So, yeah, we could, we could stick to the, the more dry weather game. And I must say that bubble pitch is unbelievable. I mean, there was not a drop of water anywhere on the field. So, it allowed us to open up and, and play some good running rugby. Yeah, I know... Um, uh Roger, the chairman there, has been doing some amazing work with the council and uh, they, they've, they've, they really are sorting out their facilities there. Yes, uh, you know, it's nice Roger to Hendricks. see that they are doing work there. And, uh, I think Roger, you know, he's a go-getter yeah. and he, he doesn't let up on the councillors and people like that, so it's yeah. good. It's good for them. And I see at Belleville also they now have moved their, um, their, their little function room from that little room in yeah. the stadium, but I know they've done bait and it's a very nice, nice facility. Yeah, it's a nice little hall to have functions like that in yeah. there. And yeah, I must say, you know, uh, the, the fact that in, in the weather conditions that prevailed over the weekend, Hamilton sc still scored nine tries. Well, yeah, nine tries, yeah. So scored nine tries? Nine tries. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it shows it can be done, you know. What do you make of the game? Were they easy tries or did you have to work for them? Look, I think initially, I mean, the score going through the first 20 minutes, I think was only seven or, or eight, sort of, I think it was eight nil, to be, to be honest. And then, and then as the game progressed, and, you know, as Hamilton started, you know, laying their foot down, I think the, the tries started coming in the second half. I think they scored uh, six of the six of the nine tries. So we didn't have the bonus point up until, you know, the second half. So, yeah, I mean, it was a, wasn't easy. And I think the score obviously doesn't necessarily reflect the, the you know, the, the toughness of, of Belleville and the opposition. Yeah, they're not a, not a bad side. They've been playing some good rugby. Yeah, no, look, they're definitely playing some good rugby. I mean, I think they definitely, um, I think they missed the lawyer, their, their captain, um, the, the nine scrum off. I think he's, a, I think lawyer's got a, a broken jaw at the moment. Oh, really? Okay, well, I mean, I could see that they definitely missed him. I think we, when, we saw, when we walked into the pitch and we saw he wasn't there to direct the traffic, I think the Oaks were a little bit, 
a little bit happier. So, because he's a good player, and you know, obviously directs that valve pack around the pitch quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, stage when we did the interview with Lawyer uh, after the after the Belleville Alderberg game, yeah. um, he still did the interview even with the yeah. broken jaw. Yeah. Tough, tough as tough, nails. Tough man. All right, the other big game was of course Belhar against Tigerberg. Uh, that was on Saturday. I know that there were quite a number of Friday games, but uh, Tigerberg Belhar, that was the one we went to. Cape Rugby TV went to go and check it out. It was uh, a fairly 50-50 game for for much of the game, and you. You would have really struggled to to see who was the better side on the day, but it was Tigerberg who came out as a as a winner there. Um, it was a perfectly dry game, some mir miracle, as sim similar to Morgan was saying now in the Hamish Belleville game, but another miracle uh, uh, rugby day kickoff at half past three. It was dry all the way through the game until the last three or four minutes of the game. Let's check out some of the highlights. Tigerberg up against Belhar at home to Belhar. each other and all that. Uh, game's only started now with 10 minutes into the game. It's totally unnecessary. We can't continue like this. <laughs> Told uh, both captains that they need to control their teams just to relax a bit. Well done, Animon! No for that! Quick walk, Jesse! There you go, Tigerberg Belha. Not uh, not not a walk over, not a walk in the park, certainly for Tigerberg. But uh, Mr. H, uh, Tigerberg will be happy to come away with that. Yeah, winner. now now they you know they they sort of broken the ice, and yeah. they everybody now in that section has got one win at least. <laughs> they were the one without the win up you're, to now. You're always going to have a win at some other stage in the season. You just yeah, have to wait. So that, but they, I I think it's good for them. It will you know boost their morale a little bit. They must have been struggling, you know, playing so long into the season without a win. That's very unlike uh, yeah. Tigerberg. So, but still a, a quality, uh, I mean, a quality outfit. There's a couple of good players in the Tigerberg team. Yeah, they, just, no. they just kind of need, need to find their, their groove a bit. Yeah, they, you know, sometimes you just hit that patch that you just don't seem to be yeah. doing anything right. And the ball doesn't go your way. You know, the referees don't look your way. So. Ja, nee, wel, ik zie er Tolly van de Weesthuis in de Azo, ik zie er een man met een groot glimlach op zijn gezicht, zoals hij nou voor mij gezegd wordt in Harvick. Maar ja, ze were looking to come out of the starting blocks there, and finally Tigerberg out of the starting blocks. And, you know, Belhar also haven't had the luckiest of seasons. I mean, I think yeah. in the beginning there was a one-point loss for them against yeah. SK Woomers, uh, you know, that, that uh, co controversial penalty try right in the, 
in the dying minutes. I think Morgz, you and I were at that game. Um, and and uh, Belha also just a just little bit like Elderberg, just like almost there, but just not quite there, but still playing good rugby. Yeah, no, James, you know, uh, obviously we, uh, we play in the same league, so we do a bit of analysis. And it's amazing to see the, 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 the sort of the improvement that teams make through, through, as the season goes by. I mean, we, watched, we were at Belha SK Warmers in the beginning of the year, like you said. And the quality of rugby that they played in that game, as opposed to the quality of rugby that you're seeing now of six or seven games later, it's really amazing to see how teams improve. So, once you know, if you think if you think if teams play one or two more warm games in early in the season, then I think you probably come up against different teams come the first or second game in the league. Yeah, it's not not as easy anymore as uh, as people think. Of course, uh, Super League A is uh, no joke. It is pretty tough. And I remember Jerome talking about um, those Varsity Cup teams thinking that they would come out of the Varsity Cup or the Varsity yeah. Shield and that, that possibly Super League A was going to be a little bit easier than the Varsity Shield. <laughs> and he's, his words at the time was, there's no ways. Uh, the, our Super League A teams are strong. Yeah, well, uh, the Martis and, and, and UCT, they are at the moment, you know, in the top. But it's not, go, it's not an easy pathway. Yeah. They have to fight every week to, you know, to make sure that they, they win their, their matches. Is that more g taking games for granted, uh, Morgan? No, look, Jeffs, in Super League A, I mean, I can only really speak for that. And then they, every week, it's, it's a, I mean, it's like, you know, the Super 15, the old cliche of every week you've got to pitch up and you've got to perform. And I think Super League A teams are starting <laughs> to realize that now, you know, Stelmoch have also come short in one or two games. And there's no team in Super League A that hasn't lost a game this season. And I think that's testament to the, to the level and the quality that they play against every week. Yeah. Well, we caught up with the uh, losing captain and coach at Bell Har, Christo Steenbach, and Mark Willard. Mark Willard, of course, doing a fantastic job there at Bell Har. Bell Har, very nice outfit. Also got their, their game in order. Nice change rooms, nice function room. The field is in fantastic condition. Let's hear what the boys had to say. Christo, um, it was a tough game, but, but it was actually not a It was a one sided game. No, it was it was moeilijk, but that is how derby's going. Uh, is there well done in the entire game. He had good gespeeld. He had he had composure gehouden. So that's what I say. We here and there, but still, didn't make it. We didn't stick it. But well done in all. We all have to go and a bit harder to work in the preparation for the next match. The game was tough for Suver here this season. Like my Amor rock better. Yeah, I think I think it's fun to begin on each other to feel and 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 we can we can eat eat the figure. But I think it's going better going forward in the second round. Uh, het gaat meer, het gaat meer, ze zullen zeer tijd ervoor. Uh, maar ik zie het daarna. Ik zie weer eens, uh, ik heb nog een bijge hoor, hoe praat je met die boys en die spannen achter. Ik ben dat is een geweldige geest samen met jullie ons. Ja, ons proberen, ons proberen uh, goede span bij elkaar zitten, zodat we ons kan voeren toch gaan in bouw. Uh, zoals ik voorin heb gezegd, een paar jongen ook eens wat samen met ons speel, uh, wat ondervinding nodig heeft. En die oude mannen moet maar proberen leiding te geven. Uh, En weer eens een lekker skare, so. ik meen die mensen komen naar hem uit, hulle geniet hulle selfs, die karre is gepakt, dat is lekker geselligheid daar. Ja, Tijgerberg, BLH, altijd groot skare. Ja, <laughs> hey, thanks. Dankie. Well, you wouldn't have necessarily thought that there would be such a big turnout at a, at a game like that on a, such a bad, bad weather day, and not to mention that the Stormers were playing on the same day, but Mr. H, and in fact, I mean, you can see that I, it, it has just come down, we had to do the the, the post-match yes, interviews inside the the little boardroom that they've got there, which is why, and if you looked at my jacket there, and, and folks are just going to have to <laughs> excuse the fact that I was absolutely drenched. I was looked like a drowned rat there uh, with my beanie on and my my rain jacket. My it was not so as of mezo emmer water om me But but Mr H still uh, going and going to show again that the club rugby's got some big matches. Stormers were playing. Everybody said that the storm was going to hit at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And as you saw, games were getting cancelled. But people were still out there to support the, the game. Lots of people. So that, that is the passion for the game, you know, that carries us year after year. Mm. And you find people turning up in the thousands for a club game. Yeah, no, it is, it is absolutely fantastic. And, and to tell us more about that, we also caught up with the losing coach there, Mark Willard, who is no uh, stranger to the ranks of Western Province Rugby. Uh, played in the, in the blue and white hoops himself for many a year. So let's see what Mark had to say. Uh, Mark Willard, coach of uh, Belha, a little bit wet, only at the end there, but uh, a, a tough game. I mean, it was equal both ways for a while. Yeah, I know. I think, uh, first of all, Tigerberg deserved the win. Uh, I think they, they wanted to play today. Uh, they came up and showed, you know, what determination can do. 
Uh, we were not so hungry as uh, we expected, but at the end of the day, uh, it, it, I think it was a pretty good game uh, con concerning the, the weather today. It was still uh, some entertaining rugby, good patches of play, and uh, yeah, I think we entertained the crowd today. I mean, to me, I mean, I was on the side of the field. I could obviously hear closely with the players. You've got a very um, a spirited team. They they seem to be very motivated. Yeah, I think it was an off day for us. I think uh, we were doing watch, watching rugby today instead of you know going out and, and, and be eager and, and use the home advantage uh, to our advantage. But uh, yeah, it's one of those those games uh, that uh, for me as a coach actually want to forget. Uh, Monday back to the drawing board. Um, as I said, well done to Tiger Bird, but uh, we will stick to our guns and we will come back fighting. No, listen, uh, well, I, I think you guys played uh, fantastic and, and the crowd out here also, again, amazing crowd, even in this weather. Yeah, great for the community. Uh, we always, you know, uh, are quite tough for the numbers that, that come out to, to support the club rugby. And uh, for future of, of Western Province rugby, it's great to see the numbers coming coming to support club rugby uh, uh, because that that's a core of, 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 the, of the province and I would I wish or hope that the, even the Western province uh, the big guns can support uh, local club rugby more because that's ultimately where you want to support your, your big structures so it would be great to see yeah. them uh, you know putting in more not that they, they're not doing it but uh, we would love to see more uh, from a coaching point of view. Well, I know there were a few scouts out here today, so uh, maybe you'll see a few acts uh, coming up to the senior ranks. Yeah, that's what we want to see ultimately. You know, it's, it's, it's great to see uh, one or two players from the province coming through and play Super 15 or uh, Vodacom yeah. rugby. Yeah. That's great. But yeah, um, I think it was uh, good for the community. Uh, we always play for them and, and ultimately we want to give them a good show on the day. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate your support and what you're doing for, for the local rugby. No, I appreciate that, Thank Mark. You, Thanks for the <laughs> <Where> today. Smart. <laughs> Mark Willard talking to us there about uh, the happenings at Belha. Um, and uh, as he said, he's hoping that uh, some of the coaches and scouts are going to get out there. But uh, I think they were. Labib Levy was out there. I know Jerome Part of Arthur uh, phoned me on the Saturday and said he wants to just make sure that the game is on and that the guys will, in actual fact, be out there to to check out some of the of the young talent. Um, Christo Stienbock, uh, captain at Bala, just goes to show the kind of pl players that we've got who can play, not just play rugby, but also uh, a, a captaincy role. Morgs. No, look, I mean, I've played against Christo a few times. He's a very good player and, and he leads from the front. And, and you, as you can see, I mean, uh, from the clip, he doesn't stop talking on the field. <laughs> He's often geeing the Oaks up and, and, he, does, yeah, he and, does, and yeah. yeah, and he leads from the front. So you can't ask for much more than that in the captain, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the winning captain and uh, coach was Anton Lemprecht and uh, Tolly van, van der Westhuis. And, and uh, we, we caught up with them uh, during the interview. And um, just an ex you've got to excuse me, folks. You see me there, my beanie and, and all that. All right. Um, sort of dressed for the occasion, so to speak. Uh, in the middle of this clip, you're going to see a little prank because the coach, Tolly van der Westhuis, absolutely insisted that I speak to to Anton um, in English, and then afterwards I switch into Afrikaans. So the first part of this uh, interview, after we speak to Tolly, is going to be uh, a, a little bit of a joke, and then you see the real part of the interview. We thought we'd just include this for you for a little bit of fun. Check it out. <laughs> All right, folks, yeah, we're with Tolly van der Vesta, isn't it? It's the wettest game we've had probably in years here um, at, at Belha against Tigerberg. It was a, a, a good win for you guys today. Jij bent een baie goeie win, ons het nou 6 games gewag hiervoor, so ja, goeie win vir ons. Nou het die nat vir julle bykie geëffekt, want eindelijk was het een redelijke droog game, tot die laatste 5 minuut. Soos hulle gesê het, ek denk die nat weer het die toeskouwers bykie weggehou en ook die spel beinvloed, maar um, op einde van die dag ons is voorbereid vir nat weer, so uh, ek denk ons het goed gedoen in die omstandighede. En maar weer, jy is wel gedaan. Dankie Jai Pau. Anton, a uh, great game today. Ja, JP, die om weeromstandigheid was ontbijt geweest, maar die game was, game was lekker geweest, goeie geest geweest. Ja, ja. So, do, do, the, weather, the weather had no effect for you guys today. It was obviously a dry game. Uh, you know, would, would you say that, uh, that, that, that you guys were anticipating a, a wet game? Ja, die omstandigheid was wachten al lang voor die wind en um, ons het voorbereid gekomen voor die wind. Alright, ons gaan hier die hele ding weer begin. Kom hier, 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 Anton, lekker game vandaag. Thanks, JP. 
En die ons, die weer, dat was nu een droge game, het jylle bykie nat weer verwacht, het jylle daarvoor voorbereid? Ja, nee, ons het heel week verwacht, 100% reen geweest vir die dag voorspel, maar uh, het was een opdage op die dag, het is al geen reen geweest, so ons het maar die omstandighede gevat en gespeel volgens die omstandighede. I must, I must say, I quite enjoyed that moment. I mean, Mr. H, that's a real TV moment, you know. You know, you know when you see the interview on TV asking the guy in a language and he's completely talking in another language. And, and of course, Anton's home language is Afrikaans. And Tolly van der Vesla is in the coach there. He came to me before the game and he said, Japes, whatever you do, don't talk to him. <laughs> it was very funny. But he wasn't put off. But he just skipped to his Afrikaans. But I think he already said, because Tolly is quite a naughty guy. Yeah. And he said, hey, he's already spotted it. <laughs> yeah, so. But Anto, Anton's playing great yeah. rugby, Morgs. Yeah, no, again, another captain there that leads from the front. And I think, uh, I speak on the correction, but I think he was also the man of the match. And, uh, you know, that just, just shows, you know, in tough, close games like that, where, where, where teams are looking for victories, and the captain can lead from the front, then, you know, you've obviously picked chosen the right guy, I think. Yeah. And um, of course, he played. I think for he was. He says in the man of the match interview, which we're going to do in a couple of seconds' time. He actually says that he played. I think for SK Warmers last year. Yeah, he was our man of the match. Um, SK Warmers versus Tigerberg last year. I think. Yes, and that's now, right. Yeah, he was our man of the match for SK Warmers versus Tigerberg, and now he's on the other end. So, <laughs> yeah, it's good to see. I think. Anton Lamprechts, today's Tata man of the match. Right, folks. Our Tata man of the match today is, of course, Anton Lamprechts. Um, Anton, for you is today's Tata man of the match from uh, Ivan Lindner and the boys there also by Tata Oostenberg and Tata Perl Vallei, a thousand rand for you in the sack. You know, you think it's the second time that you have a sack geld to om a good rugby to play. So, uh, you can do it certainly. Yeah, in the last year, we had a team to work for a year, so we had a team to work for a year. Yeah, it's always nice to have a few extra rankings to get. So, um, in the nat circumstances of the day, was it man, uh, not nice to play, but the thousand rand makes it easy to work for a day. And, um, of course, you win too. And do you want to play rugby to play a bit of money? Yeah, no, nee, for sure. Uh, club rugby is not a lot of money, most of it. So, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, thank you. And then the coach of Bella Afra, I'm going to come Mark Willard. Mark, uh, you're going to give the check here to, to Anton. I'm going to bring you in here. If you can come a little bit closer to me. There we go, guys. Mark, um, nice to have a, a man of the match in, the, in, in community rugby and, and getting away with a, a little gift like this from Tata. Oh, for sure. Anton, he, uh, I think he deserves it. Uh, he's always a bull of, uh, bull of storm. He always uh, gives his best for whoever he plays for. And uh, yes, he's a, he's a great player. Hope to uh, get some uh, uh, higher heights for him, maybe a call from Eastern Province. Well, I have no doubt that with his talent and uh, coming up against a hard opposition like Belhar, that, that we're going to see him go a long way. Uh, maybe fo one day follow in your footsteps. Uh, no, no, I was in the past, uh, we're looking to the future. <laughs> well, listen, it's been great here at Belhar. You guys have got a fantastic setup here, great little changing room. Your crowd has been absolutely amazing. We always love coming here. And once again to the folks from Tata Westenberg and Tata Paul, thank you very much. You can get a hold of the guys there. A thousand rand for a club rugby player. That's it for us from uh, Belha against Tigerberg in a very, very, well, dry game for a while and ended up being very wet. Mr. H, when it comes to club rugby, and there's, there's obviously not a lot of money in club rugby, nice for a player to get match fees like that. Of course, you know, I mean, he probably has somebody at home or that, you know, Moaning yeah. because he's gone three or four days a week, and then he comes back and says, "Look, here's a thousand rand." Yeah, yeah, it comes, it comes in handy. Yeah, it it comes in handy. Yeah. Well, what's the worst match, uh, man of the match prize you've ever received, Morgs? Yes, James is a tough one. I think um, <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I can't, I can't I, think of the top it, of my head to be honest. It wasn't perhaps those pink shorts that you got in the vault. Oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually very, spot on, James. I think yeah, I was wasn't a big fan of wearing the pink shorts. So. Yeah, I mean, probably that uh, probably goes up there. With the, but look again, it's for a good cause. So because during the Varsity Shield, the man on the match fee is seven hundred and forty rand. Hmm. As far as uh, I know. Oh well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever got that. Well, I don't but, think, yeah, so yeah, I mean, you what? You got the man of the, uh, the you got the player that rocks. Uh, yeah, well, the player uh, that rocks is also a thousand rand. Um, uh, you yeah. know, courtesy of F and B at the time. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, a Tata and, and coming on board and obviously giving club rugby players a, a thousand rand for man of the match. That's something that, you know, that definitely that can go to good use with, with club rugby players, especially. Yeah, I can, I can only speak for, for the man of the match fees in the sh during the Shield, the Varsity Shield, because I was assisting the UWC. And I think that was 760 or 740. I don't know how they came to that number. Do you um, think there will come a time when 
the chairman of the club will sort of inform the man of the match, look, that money belongs to the club. Oh, I think that there's many a times. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's, there's been many, many times already that we've given the man of the match fee that the, 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 the coach has said, no, no, give it to me. I'll give it to him later. <laughs> it comes to that code at all, though. The paying clubs and the non-paying clubs, eh, James? The clubs that are paying will probably say, well, that money belongs to the clubs. The clubs that aren't paying are saying, well, that's your bonus. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, um, Unless they say, well, you've got your money now, we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other option. We eh? deduct it from your match fees. <laughs> I'm still waiting to see which club's going to come clean because all the clubs seem to say, no, we don't pay. <laughs> yeah, there is this uh, hovering, sort of cloud hovering over this non-paying and paying club. So, uh, I don't know. Is there any way we can find out the, the, the honest truth and put our cards <laughs> on the table? Well, I, I, I don't. I'm not so sure about that. But, um, I mean, at least the clubs who do, well, one or two clubs who pay, they admit to it up front. They say, we pay match fees. And then you get the clubs who say, no, 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 we don't pay match fees. We give petrol money. Yeah, we give petrol money. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they say, hey, petrol is going down, uh, what, yesterday? <laughs> Eight cents a litre or something? And then it's going back up by 49,000 rand a litre in a week. <laughs> <and> a week. <laughs> Let's take a look now at the results in um, uh, the other results over the weekend. Super League B, some more interesting results there, of course, from the weekend, played on Friday and Saturday. And our first result there was UWC who played against Kalsrover. Interestingly enough, this match went seven minutes over time accordingly. UWC beating Kalsrover 22-20. Brackenfall beating Hamlet's 38 points to 13. Hands and Hearts losing to Goodwood 32-17. NNK 25-7 over Villagers. But th there was a controversial game there in UWC playing at home against Kalsrover. And uh, UWC were behind. They were behind uh, at, at the 80th minute. <laughs> they were going to lose the game from, from what the Twitter feed was saying. And by the way, folks, you can follow us on Twitter at, at KBRugbyTV. And don't forget that hashtag, um, hash WP Club Rugby. We look forward to your, to your tweets. But UWC were behind. Kells River were, were leading. And then seven minutes later, UWC walked away with a victory. I think there were a couple of Kayla boys a little bit unhappy about that. <laughs> sure they would be. But uh, why, why would it happen? Why? I mean, it can happen that there's seven minutes of extra time because of injuries and things that happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there could be other reasons as well, but never yeah. in Western Province. Yeah. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I mean, no, the standard of refereeing in Western uh, Province is no. just way too high for that. Yeah, no, that would never and, happen. Unless ball in play was seven minutes and penalties and they didn't kick for touching penalties and no scrums or lineouts, then you can have seven minutes of ball in play. <laughs> Hang on, run, Although, that, uh, whoa, whoa, just run, <laughs> run that bias again now, you being more of a technical expert. Well, James, look, if there are no scrums or lineouts yeah. and ball in play and the penalties are short on penalties and the ball just keeps going with knock-ons and advantage you, overs. You're talking about after the 80? Yeah, after the 80. Okay. Then you, you could possibly have seven minutes. It's a hell of a long time, but the, I mean, the possibility <laughs> is there. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. the conditions over the weekend, I'm not so sure, <laughs> but it's, it's an arguable point. Seven minutes, seven minutes over time. That's a, <laughs> that's a, long, that's a long time over time, seven <laughs> minutes. I don't think I've ever seen that. I haven't even seen that on TV. And in fact, I haven't even heard about that in TV. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, the other uh, good match, uh, result there was uh, for Brackenfell. Brackenfell also been struggling a little bit in Super League B. Nice for them yeah. to come out the blocks. I know Colin Ortier threw out a, a, a nice photograph for us, one of our fan picks. We're going to take a look at that in a couple of seconds. But... Um, Brackenfellow again having to find their feet a little bit. Yeah, no, look, uh, as we said earlier, you struggle and you struggle and then suddenly you hit, everything goes for you and there you're on, on the winning side. Now they must just build on it. You're talking about, you're talking about a winning side. The other team that, are, that, that came out with a win, in fact, they didn't come out with one win. They came out with four wins. All four of their teams, the first team, the second team, the third team and the under-20s came away with wins. Goodwood. Good for them. Good for Goodwood. Uh, yeah, also been struggling a little bit, beating hands and hearts over the weekend. And then Villagers uh, against NNK. They were always going to struggle against yeah. NNK. NNK has got a strong team this year. No, it is so. But I mean, you know, they, they were not disgraced. They won one match already. So, yeah. Probably they're on the right way. So those are your Super League B results. It is time for us to take an ad break. And when we come back, we will take a look at what happened in Premier League A and some of the other results. Back with you in a sec. Welcome back, Cape Rugby TV. Remember, get us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. And folks, we want to remind you to send us those fan pics. Any picture you've got. In fact, we tweeted on Monday morning saying any picture, especially field side. We're quite curious to see what fans you've got out there. 
And of course, don't forget that Cape Rugby TV has been taking quite a lot of photographs on the side of the field, and we urge you to tag on Facebook. You would again on the on the Cape Rugby TV Facebook page, you would have seen that we're starting to add some tips on there about how, what to do on Facebook. Facebook is a fantastic way for you to build your culture at your club, to invite more friends, to get more awareness at your club, and to recruit more players in the long run. And the one way to do that is by tagging the the players in there in the photograph. So I encourage your players to go onto Facebook, to sign up, to like your page and to be a friend with you on Facebook, and that way you can tag them, and the players can all see each other. So look out for those photographs from Cab Rugby TV show that we put up on Facebook, and uh, you'll be able to tag your, your players. Uh, really nice for the, for the players to, to get into the mix and check each other's out. And I think that we've had some funny pictures this season already. In Premier League A, now the results there. Rangers, well, it was um, a 31-26 win for them over Elsie Sophia and Silurians continuing their domination in Premier League B. 55 points to naught. Interesting result there for Silurians. In uh, Premier League B, Manenberg Rangers uh, drawing with Silver Tree, 10 all. Funderstel losing to Union Mill, 18 points to 13. Strand United, 17-14 over Strand and uh, Lunga losing to Franschhoek, 25 points to 11. In Division 1, Silverleaf, 14-8 against Violets. Masi Pumalele beating Gardens Tech. While in the Paul region, Young Gardens, it was a 35-16 win for them. And uh, Violets Paul beating Vineyards, 23-15. While Lower Paul beat Paul Rangers, um, 15 points to nil. The big result there, I would say, is the, um, is, is the Silurians result again, Mr. H, 55-0 uh, yeah. over Paul. No, that's, that's uh, you know, it's unexpectedly high. Paul is a good side. And uh, one would have thought that they would lose by that margin. But it just shows you though that Salorians is really gearing themselves up to be the champions in that division and to promote and, and to play in the higher, higher leagues. Well, there's a strong possibility. I mean, we don't really know how this new format is going to work, this 15 team, yeah. 15 team, 15 team, because I know some people have been saying that the 15 team thing is going to be top 10 and then the five that join there. but. That's actual, and after I've spoken to Danny Jones at, at Western Province and to Peter Yurster, who's quite involved, in it, from what I understand, they are going to divide up, but then also going to perhaps move teams who live closer together into certain leagues. So there's no guarantee that, and in fact, you, you're not going to have like a Premier League A that's necessarily all the best teams and a Premier League B that's necessarily no, all the best I teams. Think the, I think the, the top 15 and the following 15 will be the top one. Will that? So the top four or 15, okay. top 60, yeah. and then the others will be more into regional uh, context is where those closer to, to one another will play together. So there is a possibility that Salorians then could be in what they're now calling a, they don't know the league names yet, but could be in a sort of a Premier League A. Yeah. Uh, um, of course, the Super League A would then also be a Premier League A. I mean, they, they, in other words, that Salorians would might even be playing in that yeah. top league. Right. Get up there. Well, we'll see what happens Still because uh, I know that they've accepted it at council. Yeah. So one hopes that you know all the all the the little things have been ironed out and the thing actually works. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you know it is always been uh, the f strength versus strength. Although some people say, but in Super League. There's only three strong clubs and the others struggle at the bottom. Not anymore. But that's not so. Not know. anymore. And now you're adding another five to that ten. Yeah. And you hope that they will have the strength. But they know they're going to play there. So now they must prepare for that. Absolutely. Otherwise they will get big scores against them. Yeah, no, that looks, I think the jump for some teams possibly more. I mean, you, you can imagine that coming out of, let's say, the bottom of Super League B to come up against some Super League A teams, it's going to be hiding to nothing. Yeah, look, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be tough if you look at the guys who are at the bottom at the moment. If you look at guys like Villages, if they had to play in Super League A, if they came up, and if you, especially determining on districts and things like that, if Villages come back to Super League and start playing in Super League A teams, I think they might look at some big scores. So I hope they're doing something in the, in the, sort of in the background that is preparing them for next year and the preparation in terms of getting players and, and promoting the club so that guys want to join them and, and, you know, compete because... You don't want to see big scores like you saw with Gooded a few weeks ago. You don't yeah. want to see those scores in, in, in the sort of the top divisions. We, um, we've been asked by a number of people about the, to sort of start the debate around this new format. Um, and one of, the, one of the, the, the questions that's been raised is that uh, possibly there's going to be too much rugby. If you're playing 15 teams um, and you're going to play each team home and away, 
No. This is a. Is that not it? No, they're not going to play home and home. They're actually playing less rugby. Well, I, I thought it was home and away. No, it's not. So they're playing around Robin. Yeah. So like high. a Super 15. But uh, the current Super 15, you're playing in the conference home and away. Yeah, but there's no conference here. So how, how, do, well, how do you know then? Um, how does the? Play, I've been told that they they're going to be playing. Each team will play home and away. They will play 14 matches. Yeah. Straight. You know, and then they will play. Uh, top guys against one another, like a quarter final. Right, and right. The bottom will play also. So the top six. So the top six will be quarterfinals, yeah. and then top them. So four. you you play fourteen. Um, you play a minimum fourteen games, yeah. and, and then, then the and then a possible two, added three, three, three which yeah. makes it seventeen games, which is less than one less. Which is less. Yeah, which is one less one than less. the sixty yeah. you would play. Yeah, yeah. So seventeen games versus uh, 18. 18, eighteen games yeah. is one less unless you are in the Playoffs and, yeah. and, and so on. I think a big talking point there would be then, Jabes, is how do you determine who plays home and away yeah. at what <laughs> venue? Because, <laughs> I mean, the reality is, is that the stronger clubs would prefer to then go and play away against the weaker clubs. And when they play home, they prefer to play against the other so-called stronger clubs. Mm. So how is it going to be determined who plays home and away on which day? You see, uh, normally, there will be a rating order 1 to 15. And the, the fixture now already would say in the first week, number one will play number 15, number two will play number 14, and so on. Well, so I you don't know who's, who, you don't now know who's going to be number 15 or number 14 or number yeah. one. Well, w w I did have a discussion with, with Danny Jones about this about a week or two ago, uh, or is that we would possibly do a draw, a live draw on the show, a little bit like they did the FIFA draw where each team would get on a ping pong ball, we'd jumble it up, and, and we would do the live draw for, the, for, for next year's league uh, fixtures, and then we would determine it year on the show. So, yeah, I think that's when you will find out. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, mensen, daar het jylle nou uitgevind waar jylle fixtures, hoe, hoe die fixtures gesmokkel gaan word, het gaan hier so goed doen, boy. <laughs> All right, then. Jy moet nie heel as jy eerste tien wedstrede wegspeel in, he? Nee, jy moet nie klaar nie. Net, net die Tagebook fan, wat vir my geabuse het, daar by die game saterdag. All right, jou fixtures gaan nie lekker uitdraai nie. <laughs> it's time for us to take an ad break. And uh, of course, when, when we come back, we're going to have to take a look at some of those Facebook and Twitter fan pics that came in over the weekend. We had some great pictures of fans seem to really come together, uh, even in the worst of conditions over the weekend. Be back with you guys in a sec. So as we mentioned um, earlier on, we asked you to send some of your fan pics um, over the weekend. Um, the uh, uh, Twitter pics that were coming in, the Facebook pics. And Carlin Orkia sent this one in, and of course it was a, a win for, for Brackenfell. Long overdue, and they certainly needed it. The boys still looking happy with smiles on their faces. Check this picture there, you see it right now. Carlin Orkia, thank you for that one. In the rain, the boys having a, a great game there, looking uh, a little bit wet, a little bit sort of doused, but still enjoying it. Then Renzel Blot Botman, uh, of course Renzel taking pictures at uh, Hands and Hearts at the moment, and is taking an uh, immense amount of effort on Twitter as well to, to promote and publish uh, information about Hands and Hearts. And there you can see, of course, Hands and Hearts up against Goodwood. Nice picture there of the boys taking a, a, a shot in the line out. Another picture there by Carla, of course, um, of Brackenfell. And one more of um, the match Goodwood up against um, uh, Hands and Hearts from Renzel Botman. So thank you very much. And then from Hands and Hearts Rugby, and there you can see it. <laughs> this is uh, evidence of uh, Renzel's uh, work on Twitter. And that was us a few weeks ago when we were in the change room at Hands and Hearts, or at least not in the change room, but in the function room. And then Hands and Hearts once again saying thank you to the Cape Rugby team. And look at that. The blue and white hoops, even with the Tata logo on it and the Evox logo on it and the Leisure Hotels logo on it, Morgan Newman, Jerome, and Mr. H and myself, and, and what an effort, hands and hearts. You can just, just see the hands and hearts watermark in the, in the back there. But Morgs, the only thing is absolutely fantastic to see these kind of, um, this kind of support coming out of the clubs and, and guys like Renzel doing all these creative things. Yeah, Jess, I must say, it's quite nice to be able to put a, put a face to the, to the Twitter handle of, of, of hands and hearts. I mean, I must say, they, every single weekend without fail, they've either tweeted 
or they you know they're commenting when the show's about to go on on a wednesday night and they're commenting on weekends with regards to results and they're always you know sort of putting my name in a tweet and you know just letting people aware of it and i've often retweeted theirs so that people that follow me can you know again see that they're on twitter and follow them so no, hands and hearts have really gone out of the way and, 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 you know, taking social media, which is sort of a free advertising platform, and they're really making good use of it. So it's yeah. awesome to see. I think a lot of clubs can, you know, Alcee's River, another one that are also doing it. So I think, you know, a lot of other clubs can take a leaf out of their, those guys' books and, and start to follow suit, I think. Well, I think that the social media thing is of critical importance, uh, you know, in terms of this back channel, and especially considering this tournament that's coming up next year. Uh, the media plan behind the tournament has to be spot on. The media plan is what's absolutely going to determine the success of this tournament. No sponsor will come near any tournament anymore unless there is a successful media plan around it. Massage? Yeah, we, you know, over the years, the union has never had um, a club sponsor. The last club sponsor was in 92 uh, or 93. And ever since then, you know, all efforts to secure that hasn't worked. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, with a new system, a uh, new competition, and as you say, a new plan to give the, the person, the sponsor, the necessary exposure, that yeah. will probably sell the, the concept. But once again, I mean, that, that's what sponsors want. They want exposure. Yeah. They, that's why there are names on the back of these jerseys behind us. Uh, sponsors come on board because they want exposure. They want exposure so that they can get their Absolutely. brand out there. They want their brand out there so they can make more sales. And you're not going to get exposure if you don't have a constructive media plan. I mean, that's why people spend hundreds of millions of rands on broadcasting. So it's going to come down to whether or not this tournament works for media. If this tournament works for media, in other words, people like our show is able to talk about the results, the fixtures, the logs, the fans, uh, if we're able to keep the fans engaged week to week to week, then, then the sponsors are going to come knocking on the door and hopefully, um, hopefully some of that money will filter down to the clubs. Well, I hope so. We'll have to make sure that all those things are in place. 100%. Let's take a look now at the fixtures. Of course, uh, coming up this weekend, it is going to be wet still. Cape Town is going to have a bit of a tough time, but the games carry on. Hopefully there won't be any more postponements. In Super League A, it's Durbel up against Belha. Uh, home game for Durban, uh, Durbel at least, in uh, Durbanville. SK Women's take on Hamilton's at the track. So it's a, a bit of a derby match, Hammies against mm -hmm. SK Women's at the track. And Helderberg up against um, Belleville, home, home advantage for Helderberg. Mr. H, um, that, that, that is a bit of a derby match, SK and Hamilton's. It's always been. Ever Big since, game. Ever since SK moved up into that section, it's always been a major game. At the beginning, it was a tough game. Yeah. There's a lot of problems in it. But nowadays, it's a great uh, uh, rugby uh, uh, exercise, you know, and everybody is, you know, enjoys the type yeah, of yeah. rivalry. Let's take a look at the results, in, uh, at least fixtures in Super League B. Kells River up against Hands and Hearts. Hamlet's take on Villages. Goodwood take on Brackenfell, False Bay, and NNK. UWC and Primrose. That's the match that uh, a lot of people. Um, have been waiting for also. Uh, Cryfon take on Pernil Villages, Elsies and Collegians, the Lorians and St. George's and Scots, Dean are up against Rangers in um, Premier League A. While in Premier League B, it's Van der Stel and Strand, Lunga and Easter Refuse, Silvertree, Milnerton, Strand, Franchuk, Young Peoples and Manningburg Rangers. Division 1, we see Northerns and Laguna, Stelco up against Violets and uh, Atlantis take on Raithby, while Silverleaf are up against Hamadiers. Rocklands take on Busy Bees in Division 2, Watsonia and Kylemort, Gardens take on Blue Jets, Caledonian Roses and Blue Stars, Masi Pumulele and Young Stars. All Saints take on Young Wesleys in Summers West. While in Division 3, it's Perseverance and Imikawi. Peninsula take on Temerance. Crutisville up against Whistling Wheels. Strand Pioneers take on Richmond Rangers. Young Ideas are up against Retreat. While in Division 4, it's the Titans up against the Young Brothers. Delft take on Thistle Cities and Police. Kailich and Bishop Lavis. Vineyards and Peril United in the Paul Region. Simondium and Violets. Albions and uh, Paul Rangers. Young Gardens and Allendale, Riverstones and Lower Pollen, Young Standards take on Mill United. I would have to say that the pick of the week, gentlemen, for us in terms of uh, uh, the show, would have to be, if we look in the Strand area, I don't know if you'd agree with me, Solarians, St. George's? Yeah, that would be a, a big uh, match, a big derby. Playing in Solarians Pass. The match with, with the highest interest would probably be UWC Primrose. 
Well, we can't go to UWC yeah, again. We've been there a yeah, few we, weeks we, ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Many a time. That would have been a that would that would have been a big one. Yeah, yeah. that that would have been a big one. Uh, UWC and Primrose. Uh, but Salarians and St. George's in the Strand area, and I know that we've got so many friends in that area. The Salarians guys are quite active on Twitter. The Perenzi brothers, if we get the Perenzi brothers behind us, we're in good shape. Yeah, you would be in good shape, James. Unfortunately, I've got to play that weekend, so I can't make it down there. But if there's one of the games of the season that I would have liked to have been at, then I think it's, it's definitely the Salarian St. George's, you know? So Perenzi brothers and all their Twitter followers, if they just tweet once, I think you'll get the half of Salarian's boss hanging out there. And I know that my, my, man, my main man, Ferrell, who uh, comes out of uh, the St. George's neck of the woods, is also going to be to support us. Uh, so we've got Ruben, on, Ruben Ruffel and Rustin and Constance, and so... We've got a whole family of friends out in, this, in, in, in that area. And Solarius Pass is going to be an absolute party this weekend. So come and join us. Solarians against uh, St. George's at Solarians. Uh, so that's going to be our pick of the week. So make sure you get out there. Solarians and St. George's. It's going to be a cracker of a match. Leisure Hotels is, of course, our, one of our supporters here at Cape Rugby TV, one of our sponsors. And this week you can f win for yourself. Or at least last week we had a... A competition up for grabs and uh, all you needed to do was SMS the word leisure and your name to double three two eight zero. so if you want to win yourself a night's accommodation bed and breakfast courtesy of leisure hotels just SMS the word leisure to double three two eight zero. one night's accommodation bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers you put yourself in the mix to uh, win uh, a night's accommodation bed and breakfast at the Strand Towers Right, Evox Advanced Nutrition is, of course, the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And when I come back after the ad break, you're going to have an opportunity to win for yourself a Synergy Whey Protein. Let me show you what it looks like. This is, of course, the Stormers' favorite product, a Synergy Whey Protein. That's going to come up after the break. Get your cell phones handy, 33280. And if you win this, we'll throw in there for you the Shaker 600. You've seen me take this thing apart. I'm not going to do it again. But you win for yourself the Stormer's favorite uh, whey protein. That comes up after the break. Back with you in a sec. In a second or so, we'll take a look at the Super 15 results. But before we do that, let's take a look at the uh, competition that is up for grabs. It is the Evox Advanced Nutrition Competition. Uh, the official sports nutrition supplier to DHL Stormers and Western Province Rugby. Right, 33280 if you want to win yourself the Synergy Whey Protein. This is the Stormer's uh, favorite product. There you can see it uh, on the screen right now. The uh, Stormers' favorite whey protein. Synergy whey protein happens to be on special at this camera right now. SMS your uh, name and answer to 33280. Remember the, the keyword there is EVOX. We want your name and answer, 33280. Last week's winner, congratulations uh, to Herschel Stewart. Congratulations, Herschel. Herschel walks away with this week's prize. Let's take a look now at some of the Super 15 results over the weekend. And... Uh, Yes, the Cheetahs walking away with a, uh, a lot, or at least losing to the Bulls, 30 points to 25. The Storm is 19-11 over the Kings. The Reds, 33-20 over the Rebels. Highlanders, 38-28 over the Blues. The Brumbies losing to the Hurricanes. And the, Ch and the Crusaders, 23-22. Good win for the Stormers over the weekend. And um, yes, so it is now time for us to take some of the Super 15 fixtures. The Brumbies take on the Rebels on Friday, while the Force are up against the Waratahs on Sunday. So there's a bit of a delay in those matches there. Of course, the Springboks are playing over the weekend, so going to have a couple of uh, uh, Super 15 matches not taking place this weekend. Super Brew was where, uh, where you had an opportunity to uh, do your Super Brew predictions, players and poses, who was up and who was down. Ridder, congratulations to Ridder. Players and poses, Ridder is this week's player, and uh, Urban Warrior SA, of course, the poser. Our celebrity rankings. Let's take a look to see who sits where in the celebrity mm. rankings at the moment. And it looks like Morgan Newman is sitting at the top there. I am chasing you, Morgs, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get there. <laughs> I'm really battling to get there. All righty then. So, Morgan Newman, congratulations. Not only are you uh, our current celebrity pool rank holding, but uh, you are also the... Uh, the uh, uh, stress yeah, for that. I almost stole that in You're, between there. Eh? You are also our, um, our cap holder. Congratulations to you. Once again, the yellow cap there. <laughs> yes, I can see you're a cap man. It does suit you. Super Brew predictions. Uh, you can do them. Uh, of course, only uh, two games this weekend as the Brumbies up against the Rebels. Morgs. Brumbies, 12. Miss H? Brumbies, 10. And the Brumbies by 10. I'm going to go with the Brumbies by uh, 7. And then on Sunday, the four stack on the Waratahs. The Morgs. Uh, Waratahs, 12. 
Um, Seth? I'm going to go force five. You're going to go force by five against the Waratahs. The force. The force by five, the Waratahs. Uh, heavens, <laughs> this is a tough one. Um, I think I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the, f oh, this is really tough. Uh, I'm going to go with the force. I'm going to go with the force by, by four points. Can I yeah. say something now that you both made your predictions, Jeps? Yeah. Is that uh, you both forget that uh, the force are playing the British Lions on Wednesday. So they think they're going to have tired <laughs> legs all the time to play the, <laughs> the Warriors, I think. No, but it's not right. Yes, the, but if the worst scenario is that there's only two predictions and we get both of them. <laughs> That won't be the wor absolute worst case. <laughs> right, <coughs> so that is, of course, your Super Brew predictions. Remember, the Springboks are playing on the weekend. And uh, interesting to see how many, um, how many uh, former Western Province players have made it into the Springbok uh, squad. Heineken Mayer has made his selections. We'll have to see how they do. Um, uh, gentlemen, any, any quick things on the Springboks? No, I think it's just oh. good to see that uh, all, all the province guys that are there and, and it's nice young, sort of young. Fresh blood. Fresh blood, so looking forward to the game. Fantastic stuff. There's yourself, Morgs. Have a good uh, rugby weekend. I know you're going to have a good one. Hopefully no flu for you. Yes, thanks, James. Hopefully you can stay away and the weather can stay away too. Mr. H, that he be no need to feel crack nie, and he joins me to sear crack I'll bring the umbrella on Saturday. Castro, St. George's, because your grandfather started that club. No, no, they're playing at Salarians. I mean, St. yes, but you have to support St. George's. Not necessarily. I grew up in Salaris Park, so... Okay, your, you've, you've, you, <laughs> your, your, your history is a little bit too long for me. Right, folks, that's a wrap. Cape Rugby TV, have yourself a fantastic rugby weekend. That is, of course, our slogan. Follow us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Have a great rugby weekend. Please stay dry and please spare a thought for every cold family out there. And if you can help with any of those foundations that are trying to keep people in Cape Town warm, please do so. We'll see you guys next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye.